whenever he looks at the port, Hassan says he remembers the days when his import business was still up and running. But that was before the United States slapped trade sanctions on Sudan. I used to bring in clothes for people to design and customize. Now the ships have to stop at other ports. The goods are unloaded there and then reshipped here. That has increased the cost of shipping. So now I've been forced to close my business. Hassan isn't alone. The port is the country's logistic hub and gateway to the Arabian Gulf. It exports not just from Sudan, but also from landlocked neighboring countries like Chad and South Sudan. All the ships at the port are now foreign. But it wasn't long ago that Sudan had its own fleet of 15 ships, which transported goods and passengers. But one thing happened that slowly killed the industry. Until last month, the U.S. had imposed economic and trade sanctions on Sudan. It meant the government couldn't maintain its own fleet of ships and had to sell them to cut its losses. The last one was sold almost a year and a half before the sanctions were lifted. The sanctions came into force in 1997 when the U.S. accused Sudan of human rights abuses and sponsoring terror. It was designed to hurt the Sudanese economy, and so it did, and all but destroyed the shipping industry. Sudanese authorities say with the sanctions lifted, they'll try to rebuild their fleet, but it won't be easy. Building ships takes a lot of time. Making one from scratch takes at least two years, so we don't expect it to happen in the near future. Only after quite a while will Sudan's shipping fleet gain its strength. The port is becoming more active, though. Hopefully by next year we will have more development in the industry. Analysts say the government should focus on modernization. Lifting the sanctions gives us a chance for the government to bring in new technologies to make the port and its industry able to provide better services. For now, that won't help the economy, but maybe in two or three years it will, especially through transit services for the neighboring landlocked countries. Hassan knows his days of bringing in goods by sea are over. But he hopes with the new post-sanctions era, the younger generation could explore trade beyond the harbor he now only visits. Hebo Morgan Al Jazeera, Port Sudan.